Depictions of mermaids have been around thousands of years, even appearing on ancient cave paintings. But the oldest known story of a half-woman, half-aquatic creature comes from the Assyrian goddess named Atargetus. Atargetus is a goddess associated with fertility, the moon, and fish. The following is a version of a tale that has been passed down for over 3,000 years. From her birth, the goddess Atargetus was gifted with divine beauty and power. As she would soon find, these gifts would also work as her curse. When she became a young woman, she longed for a companion but did not find love from other gods. Instead, Atargetus surprisingly became enraptured by a mortal shepherd boy named Hadad. Atargetus showed herself to Hadad, and overwhelmed by her gorgeous appearance and strength, Hadad was overcome with a mutual feeling of love. The two lovers wasted no time and were quick to consummate their relationship. Unfortunately, during their passionate embrace, Atargetus' divine nature proved to be too powerful for the simple human. The entanglement with the goddess as strong as Atargetus ultimately sealed the fate of poor Hadad, killing him. Atargetus, feeling intense guilt over causing the death of her lover and loneliness of his loss, wished to take her own life. She threw her divine body into the waters, which slowly began to submerge her. As her tears met with the water, she slowly began to realize that no matter how hard she tried, she could not drown herself. In fact, she was now able to breathe underwater. The waters took pity on Atargetus and transformed her. No longer did she have two legs. They fused together and became a fin, similar to that of a fish. Where her hair and skin used to be were now scales. Atargetus' upper half remained as it was, giving her the look of the classic mermaid we think of today. From that day on, she would be a nurturing but fierce protector of the surrounding city where she attempted to take her own life. Some say that Atargetus was also the mother of the legendary queen Semiramis. This was from the one-time union of Atargetus and Hadad, making Semiramis half god, half human. In Atargetus' absence, where she tried to drown herself, Semiramis was cared for by a flock of nearby doves. The doves nurtured the child until eventually she was found by a shepherd named Siamas and adopted her as their own. Like her mother, Semiramis has many stories but she is often credited as being the founder of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. Some have even called this structure the Hanging Gardens of Semiramis. In some versions of the Atargetus tale, she simply falls into the body of water accidentally. In many other versions, she doesn't change from her humanoid form at all. Depictions at temples and on some coins of Atargetus show her without a fish tail. In Lucian's D. de Syria, or on the Syrian goddess, he describes a statue at the Temple of Atargetus in Heropolis. He described temple ceilings and doors covered in gold. The statue of Atargetus was supported by lions on her throne. She held a scepter in one hand and a distaff in the other. She wore a magical belt said to make her irresistible, and was covered in brightly colored gems. The brightest gem resided on her mural crown and was said to illuminate the whole interior. Lucian claimed the eyes of Atargetus would follow the visitor no matter where they were located inside the temple. The lions on her throne possibly represent her fierce strength and willingness to protect her people. Other images show her on the back of a donkey, possibly showing her more charitable divinity and peaceful side. Some of her statues also have her accompanied by doves, which may connect her to the story of her daughter's caretakers. Other depictions show her holding grains, like barley. This shows that she was not only a fertility goddess for the people, but for the soil as well. Fish were also directly tied to Atargetus. Many of the priests who worshipped Atargetus kept fish in ponds near her temples. It was forbidden to touch or hurt the fish except for priests during special rituals where theophagy or god-eating took place, using the fish as the body of Atargetus. Several of Atargetus' priests self-mutilated and even castrated themselves in reverence. They were described as dressing and taking on more traditionally feminine roles. It's said they would attract crowds by participating in song and dance with flutes and rattles. During these performances, they would be in religious ecstasy and would cut and bite their own skin until they bled. 
Atargetus was also called Athera der Quito in Greek in De Syria or De Syria in Roman. Some believe that Atargetus is an amalgamation of several different goddesses. A few Romans compared her to Venus, and while there are some similarities, it's important to recognize Atargetus for her own identity. Believers in Atargetus may ask for her power of fertility or pray for her fierce protectiveness. Some of her temples and depictions still remain and can be seen on site or in various museums to this day. With this piece, I wanted to capture the moment before her transformation. Even though she was a powerful protector, the story of her loss and heartache was what stuck with me. I tried to put some of the reflections from the possible moon behind her, tying her into the connection with the lunar cycle. If you would like a deeper dive into a targetus, there are several references that I used for this that are in the description box and I would highly recommend. Some are very different from each other, but they do give you a more complete picture of what a targetus means to people today and what she may have meant to people um, thousands of years ago. I also have uh, my links in the description if you would like to check out my Instagram, I'm most active on there. And I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.